welcome to this lecture on medical law. Today, we will review the case of Montgomery versus Lanarkshire Health Board. We will look into how this case caused a seismic shift in informed consent. Again, here is our legal disclaimer. The information I am providing here is intended for education purposes only. And with all the information being provided, being well documented in the public domain. Under no circumstances shall we accept any liability for any loss or damage incurred as a result of improper use of this lecture. If you require independent legal advice, please seek professional legal opinion. I am a medical doctor, not your lawyer. First, let's review the legal position of consent as directed by the Bolam case. A doctor cannot be found negligent where they have upheld a reasonable standard of care. This is determined by whether a doctor's actions can be supported by a body of medical experts, i.e. held in Bolam. In the case of consent, where a patient claims negligence on behalf of the doctor for inadequate disclosure, providing a reasonable body of other medical experts would do the same, that doctor could not be considered negligent. Furthermore, the Bollum case introduced a concept known as therapeutic privilege, whereby a doctor was entitled to withhold information that may scare a patient away from receiving treatment. As you will see in the case that follows, a drastic change in the law was about to take place. Montgomery v. Lanarkshire Health Board was such a case. In 2015, the case of Mrs Montgomery was taken to the Supreme Court. The outcome placed greater emphasis on what a reasonable patient would want to know. So what actually happened? Mrs Montgomery was a highly intelligent lady who gained a BSc in molecular biology and worked as a hospital specialist for a pharmaceutical company. She received obstetric care for her first child by Dr. McClellan at Bells Hill Maternity Hospital. Mrs. Montgomery was a lady of relatively short stature and suffered with diabetes. As a result, her childbirth was considered high risk. As a result, the progress of her pregnancy was being monitored in a combined diabetic and obstetric clinic. Mrs Montgomery's scans indicated her baby was of a larger than average size, a condition known as macrosomia, which is common in maternal diabetes. However, throughout the duration of her antenatal care, she was not informed of any increased risk. In cases such as Mrs Montgomery, there exists around a 10% risk of shoulder dystocia, a condition where the infant's shoulders are too wide to pass through the mother's pelvis. This condition, considered an obstetric emergency, is associated with an increase in morbidity and mortality for both mother and child. Where the condition occurs, one in 500 children suffer from an associated brachial plexus injury, plus one in a thousand will encounter severe hypoxia which may result in severe disability or even death. Mrs Montgomery, noticing that her baby was increasingly large during her antenatal follow-up, became anxious about her ability to deliver the baby vaginally. Dr McClellan noted her apprehension and made the decision not to perform any further exams for fear of perpetuating the mother's concerns. Much to Mrs Montgomery's fear, during the delivery of her child, she encountered difficulties. During the delivery, the obstetric team noted that shoulder dystocia had occurred and attempted appropriate manoeuvres to assist the delivery of the child. However, the 12-minute delay in delivery resulted in infant hypoxia. Sadly, this was extensive enough to cause permanent disability for the child in the form of cerebral palsy. Concerned regarding the quality of care provided, Mrs Montgomery brought the healthcare team to court on two accounts. First, she felt that during her antenatal care, she should have been informed of the risks of her shoulder dystocia and provided with options for suitable alternatives, for example, a C-section. 
Secondly, during her labour, she claimed Dr. McClellan should have proceeded to caesarean section based upon deteriorating infant observations. The case was taken up by the Scottish courts, presided by Lord Ordinary and Lord Bannatyne. They rejected Miss Montgomery's claims on the basis that, had Miss Montgomery been offered a caesarean section, she would have still opted for vaginal delivery. Therefore, no difference in the outcome would have occurred. Dr. McClellan's actions gained support from a reasonable body of medical colleagues, who agreed that under the circumstances it was reasonable to withhold information from Miss Montgomery regarding the risks, with the aim of avoiding a worsening of her anxiety. Further, they supported the clinical decisions made by Dr. McClellan during the delivery of the child. Therefore, the Bolam test supported Dr. McClellan's clinical practice at that time, and he could not be considered negligent. Mrs. Montgomery, unsatisfied with the outcome of the Scottish courts, lodged an appeal to the Supreme Court. She continued to claim, were she fully informed regarding the risk of shoulder dystocia and its associated morbidity, she would have chosen to proceed with a caesarean section. The Supreme Court accepted her claim. The court acknowledged that the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists recognised that shoulder dystocia was a major obstetric emergency which carries significant risks to both mother and baby. When considering Mrs Montgomery's case, this risk was around 10%. The Supreme Court ruled that the decision of the House of Lords in Mr. Bolam's case should no longer be followed, as it was based upon a view of a doctor-patient relationship that ceased to reflect reality. They moved on to state that patients should not be viewed as uninformed and incapable of understanding medical terms, but as adults capable of understanding that medical treatment is uncertain of success and may involve risks of accepting responsibility for those risks that may affect their lives and living with the consequences of those decisions. Furthermore, it was declared that the duty of the doctor is to ensure that their patient is aware of any material risks in proposed treatment, plus any alternative options. Material risk was defined as what a reasonable person in the patient's position would attach significance to, or the doctor is aware that a patient is likely to attach significance to. The Supreme Court ruled in favour of Mrs Montgomery, permitting her to reclaim damages for her child. This was based upon the fact that when the Supreme Court applied the above approach to Miss Montgomery's case, the doctor should have informed the mother of a substantial risk which was known to exist and the alternative of an elective caesarean section. If the mother had been so informed, she would have elected for a caesarean section and the baby would have been delivered unharmed. So in summary, this was a landmark case, leading to a marked change to the previous Bolam test. Previously, the court evaluated whether a doctor's conduct would be supported by a reasonable body of medical opinion. This test from this point onwards, would no longer apply to the issue of consent, although it will continue to be used more widely in cases involving other alleged acts of negligence. The current legal position therefore moved away from the paternalistic Bolam principle. Now, there is a legal duty of the doctor to ensure that the patient is aware of any material risks as determined by what a reasonable person will wish to know in their circumstance, and any reasonable alternative treatments. Thank you for watching this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll review the case of Gillick versus West Norfolk and Wisebeck Area Health Authority. Again, this is another case that sets about changes within the law regarding the standard of care for medical professionals, specifically on the grounds of consent in a child. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell and leave us a comment down below, letting us know where you're studying because our team wants to know. Any questions are of course welcome, as well as any topic requests. See you next time. Why not consider 
watching our other relevant lectures, including the Bolam test and the Belitho test, that are linked below.